a state so dedicated to skiing that they shaped it into a mitten. Let's go check out some ski resorts in Michigan's Lower Peninsula. What's going on Midwest skiers and riders? Matthew Zabransky with MidwestSkiers.com where we talk about all things skiing and riding in the Midwest. Oh, that's right. I totally forgot. A couple of weeks ago, we set out to visit four different resorts in the state of Michigan and it was another great trip. Today, we're going to be taking a look at each of these resorts and give you a quick idea of what they have to offer. But before we get started, I want to give a couple of huge shout outs shout out. First, I want to thank the Four Winds Ski Club and Lodge. Four Winds is a ski club based in the Chicagoland area, but has members ranging across multiple states in the Midwest. They are focused on promoting skiing in a social environment, and for those of you that are newer to skiing or snowboarding, or just want to meet more people to ski with, I would highly recommend ski clubs such as Four Winds. These clubs are great for meeting new skiers, gaining insight from lifelong skiers, and just being able to talk with people that share that same passion for the sport as you do. And this is especially true if your wife doesn't ski. Can we just talk about something else? <laughs> What's really unique about Four Winds is that they also have a lodge that's associated with the club. The lodge is located right in Boyne Falls, literally a stone's throw from Boyne Mountain. Has the bronze, can he challenge? And there are over eight different hills located less than an hour from the lodge making it a perfect location for a skiing getaway. I mean, where else can you stay for $35 per night? It's not possible. That said, I would highly recommend anybody looking to join a ski club to check this one out. So if you want to learn more about this ski club, be sure to head over to their website, www.4windski.org, or check out the link that I'll drop below. And I want to give an extra special shout out to Ski the Mitten, which provided a ton of information on a lot of these hills and also helped make this trip possible. They have a ton of great information for those of you skiing and riding in Michigan, so be sure to check out their social media pages and their website at skithemitten.net. Oh, I will. I took off on a Monday morning and started the six hour journey up to Treetops Resort, which is located in Gaylord, Michigan. Treetops is a smaller resort boasting 225 feet of vertical rise and 23 trails serviced by three triple chairlifts and a rope tow. While I was there, they were also installing their brand new carpet, which will be a great addition to their beginners area at this hill. When arriving at the resort, you quickly discover that this is a true year round resort. As you make the drive down the winding hill to the ski hill, you will pass sprawling golf courses, hotels, and a conference center. And this is something great about this resort. They have something for everyone to do. Tubing, cross country skiing, a spa, dog sledding, not sure, moving on. Treetops has a great variety of terrain for all abilities and its setup is great for families, especially those with younger children. All three of their lifts basically unload very close to each other at the top and there's a restaurant and bar right there. This means you can sit back, enjoy a beer or two, while watching the Hellions lap all the chairs until they wear themselves out. And although smaller in size, Treetops does have some good terrain. Now while I was there, the furthest triple was closed, but I enjoyed lapping right under the second triple, then occasionally running along the ridge and skiing down runs such as Lookout and Catherine's Way. Although these runs are short, they have a really nice pitch to them. In that same area, they also have some gladed areas, which looked really fun if there was a bit more natural snow. Another great thing about this resort is the value. A four hour lift ticket cost me $22, and they even have deals where you can get lift tickets as low as $11. To convert that to ski bum currency, that comes out to be about a 12 pack of PBR. After a super fun day of skiing at Treetops, I cooked up some lunch and packed up the car camper to head to Mount McSaba for some evening laps. Mount McSaba is a community hill located in Charlevoix, right on the shores of Lake Michigan. This hill has some deep history dating back to 1956 when 10 fathers approached city officials about starting a ski club to give their children something to do in the winter. They each tossed in $100 into a kitty. They then used this money to purchase the needed equipment and after some hill modifications, they backed up an old Ford Model T, deflated the rear tire, rigged up a rope tow, and the rest is history. 
Over the years, they would continue to develop, and with the help of Nub's Knob, they were able to install a snowmaking system, which helped this hill gain the local nickname, Little Nub's Knob. And when I arrived here, I was so excited, because this is what Midwest skiing is all about. Sure, it's a small hill with only rope toes, but it doesn't mean you can't have fun. In fact, all night you would have found me smiling under my mask. Although small in size, this hill boasts four rope toes and a variety of terrain, including a beginner's area and some gladed sections as well. And the views were absolutely amazing. Since it's right on the Lake Michigan shoreline, pretty much everywhere you look has a perfect view. Unfortunately, I was visiting at night, so I was not able to get the full experience, but I can only imagine what a sunset would look like on the top of this hill. And this hill actually skied really well. The pitch was much better than I expected, and I had a blast lapping their front and back sides of the hill. Tickets and season passes are extremely affordable, and this is the ideal place for families and children looking to get out on the slopes without having to deal with the cost and hassle of going to one of the bigger resorts in the area. Although you will not likely spend your entire day here, I highly recommend all Midwestern skiers check this place out if you are up in the area skiing. Even if you just stop to sense the vibes and the history, it really is a humbling experience that just shows that you don't need a big mountain to experience skiing and snowboarding. After an awesome first day of skiing, it was time to head back to the Four Winds Lodge to rest up for another big day of skiing at Nub's Knob. I woke up nice and early to head down to Nub's because I wanted to cook breakfast and make sure I had a full day for the experience. Upon driving into the lot, you can tell that this place is on the bigger side of Midwestern resorts. The front facing pitch looked great and I knew that I was going to have a fantastic day there. Nub's Knob is located about 20 miles north of Boyne City in Harbor Springs and boasts 427 vertical feet with 53 runs. They also have a ton of variety of terrain, including several gladed runs throughout the resort. And although I've never been to Nub's prior to this trip, I already knew about their legacy for great snowmaking and grooming. Almost anybody that you talk to will echo the same words about their snow, one of the best in the Midwest. And it certainly lived up to the hype. The opening couple of hours, you will find some of the best skiers and riders in the area just ripping every inch of minty fresh corduroy. It seemed everywhere that I went on the hill, the snow skied extremely well and the coverage on their runs was phenomenal, especially given our early season weather. Nub's Knob first opened to skiers officially on January 18, 1959, with three trails and one double chairlift. Early on, the founders Dory and Nub Sarns knew that snowmaking was critical to operating a successful ski resort in the Midwest and they would continue to work to reinvest and update their infrastructure, even going as far as to research, develop, and patent their own snow guns. Another simple but brilliant thing about Nubs is that they name all of their chairs different colors and paint them accordingly. And this makes it extremely easy to communicate with others where you are on the hill quickly. And this means that you don't even have to pull out a map or have any prior knowledge of the hill. And speaking of trail maps, Nubs was the first ski area this season that I actually had to pull one out to get the lay of the land. With over 50 runs and 248 skiable acres, Nubs has terrain for everybody, including those looking to challenge themselves. Right off the bat, I enjoyed the pitch under the green chair and its adjacent runs under the yellow lift as well. The pitch was fantastic and the best that I've skied all season. Honestly, it was hard for me to stop lapping these runs because the turns were just too much fun. They also had some great cruising blue runs that intermediate skiers would absolutely love as well. I then headed over to Pintail Peak which had some really unique terrain. Mellow tree runs, steep tree runs, and well-defined blues littered this area. Although the pitch wasn't that of the front, there was something very charming about this area and it really felt separated from the main hill. Although the coverage in the glades was less than ideal, I had a blast ripping through these areas, including pintail glades and outback jack glades. There is also some hike to glades, and of course I had to check those out as well. Once again, the coverage was less than ideal, but I could see all of these runs being extremely fun with a bit more natural snow. Near the orange and brown lifts, I also found some gems as well. 
I found the SC glades to be a nice beginner type of tree skiing. Trees are well spaced but the pitch is decent providing just the right amount of challenge for newer tree skiers. But the true gem that I found at this resort was the rope toe area and specifically the arena glades and it was an area that nobody was at. The glades here were great given the area and the number of lines and approaches in this section were almost endless. You could even go on the skiers right of the JB Arena run to find more gladed trails. The best part is you can hop back on that rope toe and lap it without even stopping. Of course these runs aren't the longest runs, but I would take a consistent and steeper pitch coupled with a quicker ride up than a long drawn out run anyways. I had an absolute blast at Nubs Knob and it was a resort that I could easily spend at least another day or two at because they had so much to offer. Each of the areas felt really well defined and they are spread out in a way that makes you feel like you're at an out west resort. And of course, the grooming was some of the best that I have ever skied. After a long day, it was time to cook up some dinner before heading back to rest up for the final day of the trip. The last day I had to wake up nice and early because my next stop, Pine Knob, was just over three hours away. I got to Pine Knob nice and early to cook up some breakfast before heading out for the day. Pine Knob is a smaller resort located about 40 minutes northwest of Detroit and boasts 300 vertical and 17 runs that are serviced by 13 lifts. Pine Knob's proximity to the city of Detroit makes it a popular choice for those looking to grab some laps without driving up north to one of the bigger resorts. The hill itself is relatively small, but has some pretty unique features. One of the first things that you will notice when you walk in is their steep offshoot run called The Wall, the only double black diamond on the map, and although it is short, the pitch is really fun. I had a great time straight lining this one and bouncing off of the top of each of the moguls. It also provides some great entertainment when riding the chair or sitting on the bar deck, as many intermediate skiers try to challenge themselves to this steeper pitch. Although the other runs don't have this level of pitch, they are consistent and make for good solid turns and lapping is a breeze. The beginner area has great space with multiple lift options, and they also have a really nice beginner run that is very very wide, long, and consistently pitch called Quicksilver. I kept thinking this run would be a great step up from the beginner area and offers a ton of space and time to practice turns properly, creating a great learning environment. Just around the corner from Quicksilver lies the thing that really surprised me about Pine Knob, their terrain parks. Pine Knob has a total of three parks across their hill, but their bread and butter park is situated on Skier's right just past the Pine Knob mansion. The run, although relatively small in size, is just jam packed with beautifully sculpted jumps, transitions, jibs, and all kinds of goodies. They have a dedicated rope on the park which provides endless lapping fun, and the first couple of hours I had the park basically to myself, and although my jibbing days are done, I had an absolute blast hitting the jumps and the transitions throughout the park. A little bit later in the day I was actually able to ski with a few of the local park riders and they were just tearing it up the entire time. It's also worth noting that Matt Dunn and his team always switch out their features giving this park a new look and really maximize the space to its full potential. If you are a park rider or skier you have to put this one on your bucket list, no doubt. As I finished up my final day skiing at Pine Nub, I loved the vibes that this place had. Although the bar was closed due to COVID restrictions, I could imagine the scene with their massive outdoor deck, grill, and music blaring. But with that, it was time to pack it up and head back home. Exhausted from three hard days of skiing, I couldn't help but think how fun this trip was. Sure, it wasn't a week of shredding six inches of powder in the Alta shoots, but the variety of terrain, resorts, and the people made this trip one that I will never forget. And I want to say a special thanks to Treetops, Mount Mixaba, Nubs Knob, and Pine Knob for having me out. I had such a great time exploring your resorts, and I will drop a link to all of their pages and websites below so you guys can get more information on them. But until next time guys, mask up, pray for snow, and I'll see you guys on the next MidwestGears.com road trip.